Okay. <coughs> okay. So uh, we will now continue with uh, the different types of GZ curves that we mentioned in the last class. First of which was um, the GZ curve like this, which indicated a kind of unstable equilibrium. So this was the initial kind of GZ. This was the initial kind of GZ curve that we talked about. This indicates a case of stable equilibrium. Then we mentioned a case of GZ curve like this, which is indicating lolling and. So in this region, you are having a region of negative GZ. And negative GZ means a not a writing arm, a negative writing arm. So it's tending to destabilize the ship, and therefore the ship uh, keeps rotating, and therefore it reaches this angle, known as the angle of lol. It reaches the angle known as the angle of lol, and um, it remains at that angle because any further healing will cause it to come back to that position. And the ship therefore continues to move at this particular angle, at a healed angle. Now there is a um, some other possibility that is a third possibility is when this is a slightly different case. It's neither this case. It's neither lolling nor it is a stable. This is unstable in the initial stages here. It is this is stable in all the stages. This is like what we call as neutrally stable. Therefore, for some when it rotates like this, heals through the first few degrees of heal, it does not encounter any writing arm, neither positive nor negative. So, what it means is that it is unstable, it remains there. Any push, if a push like this can push it there, a push like this can push it in this direction. It is a neutral equilibrium. It is neither going that direction or this direction. So that is in between the two. It is not really angle of lol, but it is not really stable either, fully stable. So therefore, this is the third case of uh, neutral equilibrium. And um, um, the moment it reaches this angle, from there on it is stable. So some after some angle just like this, after that angle from there on it is the same, it comes back. But in this case, it is not really going like this at one angle or anything. It is some small heel occurred, let us say, then it will heal to that. Let the heel stop, it might remain like that. If it heals further, it, if that wind keeps coming, it will heal further. Or if something, if the wind suddenly changes to this direction, it will change like this. It is not either that way going that direction or this direction, it is actually unstable. So that is called as neutrally stable. So that is the third case you have. Uh, these are three cases of uh, GZ curves. One is the stable, one is with the angle of lol and the third is a neutrally stable. Neutrally stable is not that important in terms of it is very rarely, very, very rare cases do you see it exactly zero. You see either this or this. So in many cases, so if the you can imagine that if the uh, design of the ship is not proper, if your uh, GM, GZ, all those things have not been exactly defined, you will get an angle of lol. It is not nice to see a ship, go, it, I mean always a ship is like this and not straight. It is not nice to see, first of all. I mean aesthetically speaking itself, it is not nice. It, it looks very bad. So it shows a, a fault in the design. And of course, it is not comfortable either. I mean if you are slightly inclined all the time, it is not comfortable either. So that is a bad design. So these are things that ha happen and there are ways to change the angle of lol, uh, means the angle of lol if you make it 0, I mean if you make the angle of lol equal to 0, then you are having this case, stable case. So that is what you try to do in such cases, when if you find after designing the ship that the ship comes with an angle of lol, you have some methods of making the angle of lol, decreasing the angle of lol to 0, there are some ways. Let us look at some ways that you can change this GZ curve. Um, the first one is to, I have already mentioned to you I think, freeboard. Freeboard means if whatever is under the water we call as draft. The region above the uh, water line we call as freeboard. Now what happens if you change the freeboard?
Now, change in freeboard means initially the vessel was like this. Now, I increase and the water line is here. So, this is your freeboard. Now, I make it this. I stretch it. Okay. This is your freeboard. Um, now, what is the direct implication of an increase in freeboard like this? The first thing is, as you can see, um, there is what, what is known as the angle of deck edge immersion that I have already told you, which means um, some, suppose it keeps healing like this, initially it heals to this, now if it heals, see this, it touches this edge, this is the initial, let us suppose this is not there, okay, the top part I have not added, it is the old ship, in that old ship, I have a water line, new water line, which is mean it has immersed or it has healed very high, this much angle it has healed and it this is the water line. So, it has hit the deck. So, this angle where it has hit the, where the water line hits the deck in the, I mean the top part of it hits the deck is known as the angle of deck edge immersion. As the name itself suggests, it means that the deck edge, this one has immersed, it is just come under the water. So, the angle of uh, deck edge immersion. Now, um, first of all, let us see how we can um, interpret the, uh, interpret this figure itself. That is, first of all, what is GM is the distance between G and M, okay. Now, um, G M G is fixed. So, that means the position of G is fixed and therefore, M if G M has to be changed, M has to be changed. Now, how can you change M? Now, this is possible by changing B M, okay. If you change B M, the distance between B and M is changed by changing M. Now, how is B M changed? B M is equal to I by del. Now, Bm is changed by changing i. Now, let us see when what is i? i is the moment of inertia of the water plane. This is the moment of inertia of the water plane, right? Now, um, first of all, initially when it is upright, the moment of inertia includes this distance. It is the moment of inertia of this distance, means this water plane area. When it is here, it is the moment of inertia of this water plane. This is the moment of inertia of this water plane. Now, that means, and you can see this distance is larger than this distance. So, as it keeps changing, the i is keep, i keeps on changing. When the i keeps on changing, the b m keeps on changing. b m keeps on changing, it means m is changing. And when m is changing, it means the g m is also changing, increasing. Because i is increasing because length is increasing. Length, is, that is, it is like b, um, l b cube by 12. So, that b is actually changing. When it is like this, it is some b. When it is like this, it is longer b, longer b like that. So, b keeps increasing as a means b means the uh, breadth keeps increasing as a result of which the i keeps increasing as a result of which the m keeps going further up which means the gm keeps increasing. Now, if gm increases, we know that gz also increases. gm is gm sin, gm sin phi is gz, or is, yeah, gz is equal to gm sin phi, okay. Therefore, uh, the um, when gm is increasing, your gz is increasing. Now, what does it imply? That means, if you, now in case you have deck edge immersion, means in case you have a freeboard here, let us suppose that it is still here, okay, your uh, ship, ship height is still here, the depth of the ship ends here. That means, uh, the length can increase only up to this much. When you increase the freeboard, means you increase it further here, it can go like this also, further, more length, it can go even further. That means your GZ curve will keep increasing. When you draw your GZ curve, the maximum value of the GZ curve is more for a, a ship with a higher freeboard. And that range of GZ also increases. Means it goes further and it goes further like this. This range also keeps, in, the angle of vanishing stability also increases. When it goes higher, it takes more time to come down. As a result of which, this is more and this is more. So your GZ is more, the range is more, it is better. So, it is definitely better to have a higher freeboard. So, why is GZ is 
gz is more because gm is more when the free board when you can see that this keeps see where, where uh, okay let us draw the initial ship okay this is the initial ship now your maximum gz will come when at this point at deckage immersion because after deckage immersion the physics is slightly different see because it's you can you no longer have the concept of volumes immersed same and all that so the maximum gz occurs at this point right that means it's associated with this much length i it represents the m corresponding to this much length but now suppose I, it's here the means the freeboard is here that means it will it can go up to this this length is more than this length that means the gm corresponding to this is more therefore the gz is also more that means you have a max more maximum gz so this means that the curve will become taller and it will become broader that is um, what is the figure let's see So let's assume that this is your initial GZ. We will call it GZ zero. This is without the free, without the additional freeboard. Now the moment you add a freeboard, your GZ will increase, and so so will your maximum. This thing, it will become like this. It will become GZ one. Okay. So. Um, <coughs> So this is your uh, curve provided you increase your freeboard. This is associated with freeboard. Now one of the ways in which the freeboard is usually increased is by the addition of superstructures. Superstructures means in a ship any structure that goes beyond the deck. So you have the ship. So you have the ship like this, okay? And any this is known as the deck. Actually, there are a couple of decks. They say main deck, twin deck. Um, let's we we are just talking about the main deck. This is known as a main deck. Anything beyond this, if you increase this, means I put a structure here. It is known as a superstructure. So um, the superstructure, <coughs> um, as you can see, because of the superstructure, the freeboard has increased, the height has increased. Now, um, in some cases, you will see that um, it, it makes the problem more complicated because sometimes, most cases, you don't put the superstructure all over the ship. Means it's not over the whole length of the ship. It becomes, um, in many cases, it is on the fore part of the ship. They put the, you have seen uh, in the ship in the big in the front part of the ship they have um, what is it called it's called a watch deck or something that is watch castle or something like that, that means where the steering is and all the, that is the captain stands that region they make the fo uh, superstructures in the front of the ship so he sees outside all the time okay that front part of the ship they have the superstructures and beyond that here they have these cabins uh, quarters and all that uh, so the super now that means the angle of um, in this region, the GZ is increased very much. In this region, the GZ is a little. So, best way is to take some kind of average GZ over the whole length of the ship. So, but in, at any rate, the GZ is increased. Okay, the GZ for the ship will be increased. The writing arm will increase because of the presence of superstructures. And the reason for that is this I have given here. I mean, you just write the steps. The first thing is that your uh, effective breadth is increasing. Not breadth, effective breadth means waterline breadth rather the waterline breadth is increasing it means that initially the waterline is like this then the waterline is like this like this there is more length there is more length here it, there is lesser length there is lesser length so effective breadth is increasing as a result of which the i is increasing which means that I by del is increasing, which means that BM increases, 
which means that m goes up and that means your gm also increases therefore gz sin phi increases or gz increases oh yeah that means gz which is gm sin phi increases um, okay that's enough therefore g as gm increases gm sin phi is also increasing therefore gz increases so this is uh, the steps that lead to the lead to the uh, this uh, conclusion that is why there is an increase in um, increase in gz there is that um, and when it goes up it the angle of vanishing stability also it's obviously a better gz curve on the whole when you increase the freeboard it becomes a better gz curve and the ship is more at heel <coughs> okay then then the direct it's the uh, same thing um, suppose you increase the um, breadth of the vessel beam of the vessel um, increased beam actually it's better to write like this that is what will have i'll write step by step what all things will change first displacement in this case increased beam means it's a, it ship is only this much initially we have made it this much we have increased the beam of the vessel now as you can see the volume under will increase it's only this much now it's this much volume therefore the wall so the displacement i'll just write one by one what changes the displacement as obvious increases now as you can see when the beam increases same concept i it increases all those increases gm increases okay therefore gm increases now as a result of which maximum gz is increased similarly um, range of gz which range of gz the meaning of it is the extent to which the gz or from zero to the angle of vanishing stability that is known as the range of stability or range of gz this is also it has a small increase then uh, when gz increases obviously the writing moment increases Um, and when the right dynamic stability also increases why because dynamic stability is the area under the gz curve now we have said that the gz is becoming higher maximum stability is the value of maximum stability has increased therefore obviously the area under the curve will be more and the range is also increased so the area under the curve will be more in even if you take a let us say the area under the curve up to 40 degrees which we call as dynamic stability at 40 degrees that much will also be more in case of a uh, increased breadth. Now Now one more thing you can see is um, at a particular angle phi let if the initial breadth was this much the initial thing I have drawn okay the first region the deck edge immersion occurs at some angle and um, if but on the other hand when the breadth is increased the deck edge immersion is occurring at a lesser angle means at this angle when the beam is only this much the decker immersion occurs at this phi okay but by phi if you if this is the increased breadth it is already in the middle of decker immersion therefore in this case somewhere at this point itself the decker immersion occurs that is a negative point of this increase in breadth now all the other things were good with the increase in breadth but this is one negative point which you see that you understood what i have drawn here that is i can draw it better if you want that is suppose this is the initial breadth just from just by drawing no other mathematics is involved 
just by drawing you see that at some angle phi, this is the angle of deck edge immersion, this is the deck edge, it has immersed. Now all I am going to do is, I am going to increase the breadth, so the breadth of the ship is here. If the breadth of the ship is here, then you will see that at a smaller angle itself, here it has healed through a smaller angle phi 2, phi 1 and phi 2, phi 2 is less than phi 1. Therefore, at a smaller angle of heel itself, deckage immersion occurs, right, you can see it from the figure. When Even when phi 2 is less than phi 1, um, the deckage is immersed if the breadth is larger. That is a negative point of this increasing in breadth. So, the best way to increase the GZ is to increase the freeboard. Increase the freeboard means you basically make the ship very, uh, what should I, this is uh, uh, tall, yeah, you make the ship very tall, okay. But that also is not very good from some other points of view. First of all, you cannot, this cannot be un, um, disproportionate in uh, respect to the length actually. So, there are other features that come here. But as far as the GZ is concerned, if you increase the freeboard, it is better. You will get higher values of GZ, that means more writing arm will be produced. So, when it is trying to produce, it, you can actually imagine it. If it is taller, the tendency for it to go like this is lesser, okay. It has a tendency to remain like this. If it is shorter, the tendency for it to roll like this is more. So, the best way to make it roll less is to make it uh, very high. And you know the other problem, right. If you keep like if you keep increasing the GM by increasing the freeboard, the ship will, ship will become very stiff that I have already said before. If you keep increasing the GM, the time period of oscillation will become very, very small and um, as a result, the ship will become like this, okay. It, it won't move like this, it will start moving very fast, very sharp, very jerks, means every second you will see a jerk, you know, on the ship. So, that is not good either. So, you cannot increase, keep increasing the freeboard, but it is a good way to increase the uh, the stability. From the stability point of view, yes, that is better. That is what you are seeing from either the GM. GM also means if you increase the GM, the stability will increase. GZ also says that if you increase the GZ, your stability, the writing arm will increase and your stability will increase. So, from both points of view, we see that increasing the freeboard is good, but from other points of view, it might be bad. Now. <coughs> Um, the third possibility you can, so the, what are we doing here? We are changing the form, means we are changing the uh, form of the ship or we have first we change the height of the ship, then we change the breadth of the ship. Now the third possibility is to change the length of the ship. So these are different ways you are how the form affects the uh, GZ or the writing or the stability of the ship. Now. Length is actually very much dramatic, there is not much effect of length except as you can imagine there is no effect on GM, GM is not dependent on length in any way. We are talking about stability in healing, okay, in trim it becomes different, but in healing part there is no effect of uh, L on GM, BM, anything, actually it depends on B, right, uh, B I think L comes, but in general. So, uh, length, the only thing that will mainly change is the displacement. When you increase the length, obviously the volume under will increase. Because the length is more, there is more volume beneath, therefore the displacement will increase. Now, there is very less change in either of GM or GZ, but your length increases means your displacement increases. So, only thing that will change is dynamic stability. What is dynamic stability? Dynamic stability is defined as delta into into the area under the curve. Now, area under the GZ curve doesn't change because of um, because GZ is not changing, but delta is changing because the volume is changing. What is delta? Del delta is equal to del into one thousand. Okay, uh, that is volume into density. Volume into density of water. Del is the underwater volume into thousand will give you the weight of the ship. Now, this is changing because the length is increasing, so this is changing. So, dynamical stability will change, but the area under the GZ curve won't change. And so, with an increase in length, the only main, um, the only main um, 
change that you need to expect is really in the um, dynamical stability or in the displacement. Other things like GZ, maximum GZ, GM or the range of stability, none of those things change. All right, now actually for this course, in the beginning I said I will be following mostly Adrian Biran's book, but I have also followed this book to a very large extent, okay. So I think it will be good, have you, do you have that other book, Adrian Biran or some Xerox copy or something? Oh, you have an e-book. I think it will be better if you take this book also because uh, I have taken from both the books equally almost. It is not very different, it is the same concepts, but these people have got more problems. So, uh, if you read this, you will understand that more. That has good theory, in, that is the prescribed book in all, almost all the universities, but this book is easier to understand and it has more problems. So, you can solve it much, I mean you can solve the problems, you will understand what you are talking about. So, I think you should take this book from me sometime and, uh, okay, and uh, Xerox it or something, Xerox it and give it back. Okay, because for the exam I will be asking pro things from this, I do not want you to get um, not know things. So <coughs> now we will look at a couple of uh, ways in which we can change GZ. Depth of the ship or the freeboard, we can change the GZ. Now, there are other ways of changing GZ, the main way is by the shifting of weights, okay. You can shift a weight vertically as a result of which the G moves, means our, what is the way to change GZ? GZ is equal to GM sin phi. So, the way to change GZ is to change GM. You can move M by changing the form or you can move G by changing the something. How can you move G? You can move G by shifting weights. So, the weights to, the way to do, do that is shift weights horizontally and vertically. So, two ways that will change your G as a result of which your GM will change as a result of which your GZ will change. So, that is we are going to the next part of changing G. So, this is by shifting weights. Okay. So, we are talking about a vertical shift. So, um, let us suppose that the ship is initially like this, um, G0 and Okay, now um, so initially we have our center of gravity at the point G0 and I have now shifted a weight vertically up, okay. Some weight in the ship has been shifted vertically up as a result of which the center of gravity moves to G1. This is your position of GZ0 means the initial writing arm, GZ1 is your final writing arm. So, as you can see the initial GZ0 will be reduced by an amount GX and it will become GZ1, G1Z1 or G1Z1 is equal to G0Z0 uh, minus uh, G0X, G1Z1 is equal to G0Z0 minus G0G1. Um, sin phi. So, 
so g1 so this is obviously coming from the geometry g1 um, so the ship is healed through an angle phi if this is phi means this is phi if the ship is hang healed through phi this will also be phi just it is the same parallel line so g1 z1 will be g0 z0 minus g0 g1 sin phi um, that is g1 z1 therefore the decrease in gz is equal to g0 g1 sin phi now um, this is the first one this is the first concept so uh, and in the second second case when you can have when your weight is shifted vertically down that means you are pushing the weight down your g1 will come below as a result the equation will become g1 z1 equals g0 z0 plus g0 x plus g0 g1 sin phi okay it's just the same thing actually they have done for uh, the plus when the center of gravity is lowered um, therefore um, g z is reduced by g 0 g 1 sin phi this is the thing decrease in g z is g 0 g 1 sin phi. So, what is the decrease in g m? It is g 0 g 1 because g m sin phi is equal to g z. I just put it here sin phi is cancelled on both sides. So, the decrease in g m is g 0 g 1 and the decrease in g z is equal to uh, g 0 g 1 sin phi. Um, now, in case, uh, in case the g0 g1 sin phi becomes greater than g0 z0, it's decreased. Now you have initial g0 z0. Okay. Now, in case g0 z0 is less than g0 g1 sin phi, means g1 z1 has become negative. What is the meaning of it? M. That's the meaning. It means that g has gone above m. It means it has gm less than 0. That is the meaning of it. That is what. If g1 z1, I will repeat it if you want. If g1 z1 equal to g0 z0 minus g0 g1 sin phi is um, less than 0, it means that at that point g0 g z0 is less than g0 g1 sin phi and it implies that. Um, g m is now less than 0. It means that the ship has become unstable in that state. Okay. g m less than 0. Okay. Now, um, so, your figure if you are drawing the g z curve, it will become like this. Um, different angles of keel phi. <coughs> then your initial GZ curve. Now, in this case, when GZ is increased, is when uh, the G comes below. Okay. Now, if the G is shifted below, we consider the case when G is shifted below that means the weight has been shifted down when g has come down that means your g m has increased okay in that case this will become like this okay you can imagine when your g m has increased what does it mean the moment you say that your g m has increased that means the slope of means g m is what when you draw a tangent here this line at one radian it becomes the uh, gm. Therefore, if your gm is more, gm is here, let us say, that means this slope is more. So, if the sh curve was initially starting like this, that means it is now starting like this. So, initially the curve is like this. The moment the gm has increased, the curve has started here. So, it is going up. That means the chances of it maximum gz has increased. Is it clear or should I say that again? That what I am saying is that is if 
uh, this is your gm let's say this is one radian so at this one radian if i draw a tangent here so this okay this is at one radian at this point you get gm now when i move that g down m is still there when i move the g down that means your gm has increased as a result of which what am i saying gm has increased which means that this length here okay it's actually here like this let's say okay at one radian gm is here gm2 this is gm1 this is gm2 now what i here i have pushed a weight down as a result of which gm has increased if gm has increased if it has to hit here that means this curve should be sloping upwards more than this it's obvious otherwise i cannot draw a line that is higher it's a straight line right i cannot draw it if i am drawing it straight this angle should be less than this angle obviously so the moment i say that the gm has increased that means your gz curve is starting out in a higher slope okay all that is say, all i am saying is initially if this is phi 1 this is phi not it's not phi it's alpha alpha 1 this is alpha 2 alpha 2 has to be greater than alpha 1 if gm2 is greater than gm1 that's that's all i am saying it's obvious from that because otherwise you cannot draw a straight line there and hit it at the gm2 at the same one radian so if gm2 is greater than gm1 alpha 2 is greater than alpha 1 which means that the new gz curve is increasing at a higher slope it's increasing here in the original case it was increasing like this so that that is that that is very important when you wh why i'm saying it is it's important when you draw the gz means uh, suppose i ask this question related to so there are a couple of points that will check when you are doing this i mean when i if you are asked draw the gz curve in that case two two points are very important first is that i should see that at one radian you are drawing the this one radian should be marked okay otherwise you won't know what angle is it should be written as either 57.3 degrees or one radian so you have that mark and you should be you should have a vertical line there because then only the gm is drawn you know what is the gm and you have the initial gm then you have the final gm now this initial and final gm that is very important those two points should be marked clearly and that gm both the gm should be joined with the origin and this origin it should show that this gz curve is starting at that slope if you draw one gz curve like this and you draw a gm like this at one radian this is completely wrong okay so you can it's not just about drawing a straight line here it's that's not the point you draw a straight line at one radian and it should be like this it should be tangent to that straight line this is your gm not this this is your gm okay so it should be clear so don't draw it like that that uh, tangent should come as a tangent it should look like that in the figure itself so that is the meaning of uh, that is one way what happens when you are when you are shifting your weights uh, up or down now another possibility is um, so obviously if you shift your weight down it ship will become more stable if you shift your weight up the ship will become less stable okay um, now the next possibility is to shift your weight horizontally let's see what will happen as a result of that um, it doesn't have to be the same phi you are saying if you look at this figure if it has to be the same phi um, decade immersion will occur at the same phi yes but that is not the only criterion that decides gz uh, the maximum gz uh, Decker criterion will definitely indicate if the decade immerses, then the GZ starts decreasing. That is true, but that is not the only criterion. Let me see what is the what are the other points. Um, actually, it has to. One of the things is that uh, nothing comes to me right now. I'll have to think. That is, but it's not the only criterion. Sometimes you'll see GZ. In this case, it doesn't have to be exactly at the same phi. Maximum GZ will sometimes be before also. Okay, I'll have to think now why it should be. Uh, that is one way of thinking of it, but uh, 
you are sinking more weight has come there that is true in that way you are shifting changing g but what i was trying to explain by increasing the superstructure there was just that the freeboard is increased two things happen actually when you increase when you put a superstructure you increase a freeboard and you increase a weight upstairs which means that in the up region which means that you are shifting the g up yes actually when you are doing the when i was doing the previous derivation i didn't take consider the shifting of weight i just considered the increase in freeboard yeah you are right you have to consider that increase in weight also increase in weight will be there as a result of which the g will shift up that is true that is a good point then uh, the next one is in case you have a horizontal shift of weights um, so um, so you have your initial g g0 this is a g0 now um, there is a weight shifted horizontally as a result of which g1 and um, mm, this is your g1 okay the g has shifted horizontally and let us say this is the position of your center of buoyancy um, or this is your position of center of buoyancy b1 initially your b0 is here now i have shifted the g now i have shifted a weight horizontally which means that the g of the ship has horiz shifted horizontally only and b has shifted because of the ship has healed the b has shifted and at b you draw a this is at b okay this is at b okay this is b1 or this is b1 now there i draw the vertical this becomes the meta center m okay and uh, from here i draw from g to this um, this g to z so you have two distances here <coughs> um, this is be phi if this is phi it is healed through an angle phi that angles should be clear right what that what those angles indicate are um, this is 90 degrees this is gz0 this is gz1 so uh, let me explain the figure again so this is your initial position in the upright position you have g0 b0 now g has been shifted horizontally and g0 has gone to g1 okay that is now your position of center of gravity now the ship has healed through an angle phi and it is like this, this is your new position of B1 and uh, where B1 hits the original line you have the meta center, okay. So this angle is phi, this is just the position of G. Now if you draw, now if you draw from G0 to this vertical you get GZ0, if you draw from G1 to Z1 vertical you get uh, GZ1, G1, Z1. Now you will see that. g1 z1 will become g0 z0 minus g0 x let's call this x i mean this is not x this okay let's call this x uh, g0 z0 minus g0 x okay and uh, therefore g0 x you can see from geometry is g0 g1 cos theta cos phi not theta cos phi okay and therefore g0 g1 z1 is equal to g0 z0 minus g0 g1 cos phi in fact that's all so this is your new position of this is the amount by which your um, um, gz has changed okay so gz has changed by g0 g1 cos phi and your gm has changed by that means gm sin phi has changed by g0 g1 cos phi and um, that means your gm has changed by g0 g1 cot phi okay so your gm changes by g0 g1 cot phi and your gz changes by g0 g1 cos phi
It's obvious, no, from that figure. This angle, this angle is ninety degree means. Oh, in this, this is you are saying, right? Um, will it be ninety degrees? Let me see. Wait, G one uh, is your position of center of gravity. It is the line joining G one and M. That will be a vertical line. Remember that figure is G zero. G one is horizontal, all right, but it is the line joining. Mm, G1? No, it cannot be. That means it has to be parallel, I guess. Let's see. Uh, now, G1, Z1 is a line that is, we can think of it like that. G1, Z1 is a line that is perpendicular to this. Okay, so it is perpendicular to this. Um, if you make this as a line perpendicular to that also, it will become parallel to that. Uh, so, this is true only as you said if G1, this line is parallel to that, right? Um, G Z0. I guess it should be parallel, but I am trying to see why. What is that line actually? G1. is the perpendicular distance between G and Z. I have to think about this is also, it is parallel as you said, it is parallel, yes. But what exactly, G1 is the position of the center of gravity and uh, Z is um, the perpendicular, it is the distance between G and Z. I have to read this, but okay. Then, <coughs> um, so what do we have? G M. Then, now let us do a couple of problems. That is, it's very simple only, but we'll do it. So you are told that there is a vessel. Which has a displacement of um, fifteen or delta of fifteen thousand tons. Actually, that is the advantage of this book. If you really can solve the problems in this book, that means you have understood it because the problems are designed like that. Very, very good problems. Yeah, if you remember some of the problems that I have discussed some time back, different problems related to drawing the table and G. Um, you know, finding I and all, Simpson's multiplier and all that, if all those things are from this book. So, it is very, it does a lot of problems very nicely. You, I think you should definitely take this book. Okay. So, you have, um, <clears throat> so you have a vessel that has a displacement of 15,000 tons. It has a kg of 7 meter and cargo is now put on the ship such that kg is changed, it moves upwards by 0.25 meter, kg moves upwards by 0.25 meter. Now you are given the GZ curve, you might be given the GZ curve like this, this is how they usually give it as a table, okay. Like this. Like this, it will keep going till probably at 90 degrees minus 0.5584. Now, this is how they have given your GZ curve. Okay, GZ. Now, one thing is that for this exam, I will give you, but you have to have a graph sheet. There is no other way you can draw a GZ curve in it. It is you will have to draw a GZ curve in some problems. So, the importance of a graph sheet is that when you have 
such a gz curve you are probably going to have to go means you you might have a value of gz from which you have to find a heel or you might have a value of heel from which you have to find a gz let's say 35 degrees i ask you not ask you like that but when you are doing the problem you will see you will have to read from 35 degrees you will have to read the value of gz so that means you need a graph graph sheet you have to plot the this table will be given you make the table you plot the graph and of course freehand only with you just plot a rough figure and then from that figure you will have to read for the different values of gz that you will see so it's important that you you have uh, that you be given the graph sheet and we have to do that then so graph sheet will be given but be prepared to do that then in this problem you are asked what is the range of stability so these are the kind of questions you will have range of stability then um maximum gz and the phi at which it occurs so you are asked what is the maximum gz and the angle at which it occurs then you are asked the dynamic stability at 40 degree the meaning of this term dynamic stability at 40 degree is that you have to find the area of the curve from 0 to 40 degrees area of the delta into gz is dynamic stability not just gz area so delta into area of the gz curve has to be found up to 40 degrees that is thing and you are asked what is your estimate of gm so these um, four questions you have to do let's see how it is to be <coughs> done then um, <coughs> we'll just use this formula this is this formula that is for shifting the weights when you have a vertical shifting of weights we have to find out what is your um, change in gz we have talked about your decrease in gm and all that so this formula we want okay decrease in gz is g0 g1 sin phi and g0 g1 okay mm. You are asked G zero G one sine phi therefore we need to make a table like this um heel G zero Z zero Okay, now you draw he heel uh, 0, 15, 30, 45. Then now G0, Z0 is the direct value you are reading from the table. This is given, whatever it was. Okay. And then how will you find G0, G1? G0, G1 is the shift in the center of gravity. You are given in the problem. Uh, is a problem. Um, At any rate, uh, you are told that delta kg, the rise in kg was 0.25 meters. Okay, this was given in the problem. That is your G0, G1. Now you need to find G0, G1 sin phi. If you remember the formula, this is what we want G0, G1 sin phi. So all you do is that value of G0, G1 delta kg, you multiply by sine of these heel angles. So you make this table. Then G1, Z1, in this case, it is an increase in G, which means that GZ is. Um, decreased okay so you get um, do this g0 z0 minus g0 g1 sin phi will give you g1 z1 this will give you your new values of gz okay okay i'll stop here we will continue this in the next class okay thank you mm -hmm.